Elo Hell is an absolute myth. At least that is what me and many other coaches have said in the past. And while there are some key aspects of Elo Hell that are 100% not true, there are also some things about Elo Hell that is 100% real. And if you don't acknowledge or understand what that is, then you might really be stuck in a real Elo Hell. So there's a lot we got to break down and talk about. But for those of you who want to take your improvement seriously and climb, I just reopened up my Patreon, and out of everyone we've coached, we've seen some dramatic improvement. Players jumping all over the place to higher peaks than they've ever been before. So what are you waiting for? Go check it out right now in the links down below. Now, before we actually talk about whether or not ELO Hell exists or doesn't exist, we need to define it. And what is ELO Hell actually known as? Now, there's a lot of various definitions, but the general one is it's a matchmaking ranking spectrum where individual matches are poor and often determined by factors such as poor team coordination, which are perceived to be outside the individual's control. Ultimately, that feeling of ELO hell is that you do not have any control over your wins and losses, and thus, there's nothing that you can do to climb. That's the general presumption, and this could be for a number of reasons. Really bad teammates that just prevent you from having individual impact, or the rank system not being fair, and there's uneven sides every single game. Now, the problem is, the premise of ELO Hell makes sense, but the conclusion does not. Teammates can suck in your games. Is that true? Absolutely. Is the rank system bad in Overwatch 2? Yeah, I would say it's pretty bad. Are there unfair games? Absolutely, and I think that this is most apparent when there is a huge differential in either a carry DPS like Widow or a tank difference, and you definitely can feel it when those games aren't fair. So if I agree that all those things can be true and all those things take away from your agency to carry, then how can I also say that Elo Hell ultimately does not exist? I would say like if your next rank is climbing up to a certain altitude on a mountain, right? All of these bad factors that can actually hurt you or pull you back from climbing this mountain is like weights that you're wearing. Big weights that are holding you back. Big weights that are preventing you from climbing. But if you are strong enough, you can still climb that mountain. Now, is it frustrating? Is it annoying? Is it difficult to do? Yes to all these things. But that doesn't change the fact that if you want to climb that mountain, you have to do it with the weights on. And everyone else who's already climbed the mountain had to do it with weights on as well. Now to shed away from the analogies for a second, what you need to understand is that all of these factors that can contribute to a bad ranked experience can still exist. And even in spite of those things, you can do enough game after game in order to allow you to climb. Remember, at the end of the day, you do not actually have to win every game to climb. You just need to have an above average level of impact for your role and every time you're up against someone on the enemy team where you are performing better than them on average over time you will start to climb because you're doing more you're contributing to more one team fights you're contributing to more one games and if you can maintain that for long enough you will eventually climb now the smaller your skill differential is like how much better you are will change how much you climb at one rate if you're only slightly better on average then you really won't climb very fast and it'll take you a ton of games to climb and also that difference will scale out if you don't improve but if you're a lot better then you will climb much much quicker and there's varying degrees to that depending on how much better you actually are compared to the other people in your role in your rank now while i 100 percent believe it's possible to climb out of any rank into the next one and as a whole, ELO Hell is a concept that I reject. There are some truths to ELO Hell. As in all things, there's always some truths. And the thing that you need to understand is that oftentimes the environment of these competitive matchmaking systems, the environment of a ranked game, is actually so toxic, so bad, so poor quality of matches that it actually doesn't allow an environment for someone to improve in. So this is a lot different than the ELO hell that we talked about before, where it's just a place where you can't do anything to climb no matter what you do. I don't think that that's true, but I do think that there are certain ranks in this game that don't allow you to learn don't allow you to improve, and they're very, very frustrating to try to play through. So all these factors are working against you. Not only will playing in these environments not allow you to improve, but they will be very frustrating and they will prevent you from wanting to grind and go through the motions enough to get better. One of the biggest problems that I see, and I've interviewed a lot of people in lower elos, like from the variants of bronze to low plat, I would say is the most likely elo hell candidates. The problem is players are making mistakes all the time. They're making these huge mistakes 
but their opponents are punishing them randomly sometimes they're getting punished and sometimes they're not and most of the time it's not so you're never actually learning when something is a mistake and there's no feedback loop to learn from you pull off a play and maybe in one game because no one punishes you for it it actually wins you the game but up against a slightly different player or a slightly better player that exact same play has huge easily targeted mistakes that you would have gotten destroyed for but how are you supposed to learn that if you're not punished for that so you're not actually learning you're playing the game you're learning some amount of mechanics and game sense but there are huge fundamental decisions that you're going to keep repeating and never fixing because what you get punished for is basically random and this is the thing about elo hell that i think doesn't get enough conversation because inside the gaming environment inside the low ranks of play you have to actually take what is objectively the correct play away from what you're actually doing in a game and that's a really really hard and weird concept i know but a lot of the problems that come from just playing through quote unquote elo hell is it's like taking tests where the answer key is just completely random so now you're in a situation where you're not really improving at the rate you should because you're not getting that receptive feedback loop and then on top of that we're putting yourself in a 5v5 environment where your actual individual impact is relatively low compared to many other top games in a 3v3 your individual impact will be much more in a 2v2 your individual impact will be much more as well and this also just kind of comes down to the fact that elo hell is a concept that people complain about the more players are added to a game on each side the more and more the elo hell conversation comes up because you do have less impact you are going to be less effective in these games the more and more people are added to each side and then the last thing that creates this basically uncertain feeling about elo hell and this really negative feeling about grinding ranked is really the rank system as a whole whether it's the resetting of people bringing them way back doing a soft reset over and over again or whether it's the lack of transparency could be a number of different factors but when you combine all these things together you create something that feels a lot like what elo hell would actually be you don't improve you feel like you can't grind you feel like you can't climb or just have any impact but just like any team sport or any competitive game that has existed or will exist, you still have to figure out how to improve and climb even in these environments. In fact, I would say that that is the skill that you need to unlock in order to climb. First off, how do you improve or learn in a terrible learning environment? Now let's go back to the many analogies that I like to whip out. If you go to school and your school's absolute shit, how do you learn? Most of the time you go to the internet, right? You go to some other source to learn. And that's what many of y'all are doing right here. Watching a video like this, watching high level streamers, getting private coaching, ways in which you can learn outside of the actual environment that is not a great place to learn, if I'm being honest. You can also focus on things that give you guaranteed results without needing to understand or be a part of that receptive feedback loop, like improving your mechanical skill, whether that's things like your aim or mechanical executions on your character. Things that you can learn no matter what rank you're in and there's a clear distinction between the mechanic skill level in low ranks and high ranks so that is something that you can directly work on that does have a direct correlation in how high you will climb you can incorporate duo or trio cues of people that all want to improve and all want to coordinate or you could try to communicate yourself in any way you can to try to mitigate some of this individual impact doing things like combo ultimates would at all possible these things will get you more guaranteed value and there are ways to cut through a lot of that randomness and use your teammates as an aid to your impact rather than just random chess pieces on a board but I think the last thing that you need to understand and this is the most important thing if you really want to climb out of elo hell you have to put your mental right you can't walk into ranked thinking that if i play well i'll win every game and the thing is that is setting you up for failure because winning every game is not possible you just can't do it but you can play well every game you can try and actually pull off good plays you can try to take information that you've learned other places and incorporate it into your gameplay and you can try to be the best player at your rank for your role on either team every single time you can do all these things and if you do these long enough you will a hundred percent improve and a hundred percent climb i guarantee it it doesn't matter about anything else now i do know that blizzard is actually incorporating things in the future to make it so that roles across each team are going to have a matched 
ranking system. So you're no longer going to have like a freaking GM tank with a high diamond tank versus each other. That kind of crap is never going to happen again once the system's in place. And hopefully that will fix some aspects of what this ELO hell feeling is, but it's not going to fix everything. And you still need to have the right mentality if you want to climb, but try to stay away from a lot of the noise, stay away from a lot of the things you can't control because you can't fix rank system no more than you can fix your trash teammates. You can only focus on what you can do and how you can improve and climb. But I hope that this has helped you understand everything you need to know about ELO Hell. But let me know if you agree down below. And make sure you check out my Patreon if you really want to improve and shoot past your limits. I've helped a lot of people improve that did believe in ELO Hell. And then they quickly climbed right afterwards. So go check it out right now down below. And I'll see you next time.